I'm Charles Dobson, Business Development at Semtech, and with me is my good friend and colleague, Stéphane Tremblay, CTO of the AptoVision Business Unit. Stéphane, let's tell people what uh, brought us into the lab today. Uh, first reason, we're bored at home, but more importantly, we have a nice demo we would like you to see. Sounds great. So let's walk behind this bench and uh, take a look at the setup you've put together. So here's the setup that we want to show to test the performance of AVX versus HTBC. And by performance, I mean, more importantly, noise immunity. So we have a 4K player, which is pushing a 4K6444 video content onto transmitters, right? The player is connected through an HDMI cable. Uh, AVX versus HDBSD, both will be connected to a 70 meter CAT6A shielded cable. Once the content hit the receivers, it is sent back through HDMI on the TV that we see. And the thing I'm gonna use to generate noise is the barbecue lighter. Here's the interesting part, the demo itself. So we start with the AVX box being connected, right? 4K content going to the transmitter, receiver with 70 meter cable, and then to the TV. As I take my barbecue lighter to generate noise, we can see any, right? The screen is perfect, stable, there's no artifact. Let's do the same experiment using the same HDMI cable, same CAT cable through the HDBase T boxes. Now that the signal is back, as you can see, it's the same 4K6444 content, but this time around, let's try the barbecue lighter. Oops. Creates artifact, and not only artifacts, but sometimes the receiver does not get back to normal state. Let me explain why. Okay, so why the performance between AVX and HDBase-T is so different? We go from an AVX link fully functional that is resilient to electrostatic discharge to an HD-based system that will fail each click of a barbecue lighter. With the exact same setup, isn't it supposed to be similar performance? In order to answer that question, let's look at what's under the hood of an HD-based T5 compared to the 10G based T5 used by AVX. In the case of HDBase T Gen 1 and Gen 2, the file mainly consists of pulse amplitude modulation and coding and analog equalization at the receiving end. If you consider that HDBase T does not carry a high bandwidth return channel, their approach is simple but okay to recover insertion loss created by long CAT cables. Unfortunately, only compensating for insertion loss isn't sufficient in some application. In Pro-AV, not only we have to deal with long cable runs, but we should also be immune to cell phone emissions, for example. Harsh environment can create emissions capable of breaking this simplistic implementation. Now, compared to HD-based T, a 10 g based T5 is significantly more complex and sophisticated. This is not a surprise. The high triple E committee behind the standard for 10 g based T had pushed the spec way high in terms of criteria to meet, as you can see on this slide. The 10 g based T standard is meant to support full duplex 10 gigabit per second, harsh environments, bundled cables, 100 meter of CAT 6 a shielded or unshielded, support for patch cable, better than 10E-12 bit error rate, and all this while being immune to common mode noise like cell phone. Now let's take a look at the 10 g t transceiver top-level architecture. In order to obtain the target specification, commonly known analog techniques were not enough. As you can see in the block diagram, on top of the analog portion in yellow, 10 g t engineers had to design very sophisticated DSP to reject alien noise, cancel near-end crosstalk, cancel far-end crosstalk, cancel echo, and cancel inter-symbol interference. 
these highly sophisticated DSPs shown in red compute 10 tera operations per second in order to achieve this performance. More than 100,000 lines of codes are needed in these firmware-driven DSP to perform to spec under all cabling environment. Not surprising, there are so few companies capable of offering such complex TNG-based T5. These TNG-based T5s are pure jewelry of modern integrated circuits. The whole Pro-AV industry on its own would not have been able to achieve this level of performance without the big Ethernet industry spending billions of dollars in development. So that was a pretty definitive experiment, and uh, thank you for a really clean and clear explanation of the phenomena that we saw. How can people learn more about the AVX product or the technology indeed that's behind it? That part is the easiest one. You go on Semtech website and you look for the link My Semtech, and then you register. It's the only way to get access to all the documentation, toolkit, uh, data sheets, everything you need to know. Cool. So thanks, Stefan, for the setup. Thank you, Charles. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Bye.